It's a full moon and there's another episode due. (laughs) Got to get it done, got to write something. What am I doing? This is shit. I've got nothing else to say. I've got three quarters written of a piece about time. I've got three quarters written of a piece about House of Sorrows. I've got three quarters written of a piece about writing a piece. Produce something, Kate. You're only as good as your last episode. Don't doubt yourself. Just hesitate, vacillate, procrastinate, dither, waffle, waver. Is this really what I want to do? Second guess yourself. That'll help pile on some more self-doubt. Make it poetic. Make it reflective. Make it funny. Never, ever, ever be boring. I'm empty. I'm done. I'm speaking to the void. I'm speaking from the void. Who am I to speak anyway? To be heard? I don't know anything. It's all apropos of nothing. Crickets. That's all I can hear. So write as if no one's listening. No, no, you must know your audience. No, no, you should write for one specific listener. Get an avatar. No, relax. Do nothing until the full moon comes over the hills and spills light onto the page and the words will appear. Well, that, at least, I know, is bullshit. Welcome to Tide to the Moon, coming to you on the full moon of the Easter long weekend. My name is Kate Lawrence and I am your host. Here in Macedon, seemingly out of nowhere, the colours of the harvest season are arriving. There's beautiful reds and golds everywhere I turn and it just catches my breath. And the dancing light sliding off the autumnal trees is just a bit of pure magic. But it's the weather that's the real flag that things are changing. While this Easter weekend is blessedly warm, which I'm so happy about because a dear friend is to be married and so we will all be able to enjoy the full moon, the fire and the feasting that her and her partner have been dreaming of this last six months. And on Sunday, I will gather with my sisters and hopefully my brothers and our children for an Easter family picnic at Williamstown Breach. And the temperature's predicted to be 28 Celsius, so I, for one, will be taking to the water. But before this unseasonable warmth, we had a short stretch of grey, damp and cold weather. The fire was lit for the first time since last year. My crochet work came out and I found a happy marriage between crocheting and listening to audio. Ah, but despite this bucolic backdrop, the audio collage at the top of this episode is really where things are at in the making of Tide to the Moon. For me, there's only one direction through to the end of this recording. But you, lovely listener, your escape route at this point is to press the stop button. Go on, do it. I really don't care if you listen or not. In fact, it's better for me if you don't. No, really, the pressure. Look, You know you've got better things to do. Millions of other podcasts you could be listening to. (sighs) Well, if my petty foggery has not stopped you listening, I must slip into my lick-spittling self and desperately hope that you like this, that it's sort of okay or okay enough. I, I hope it actually gives you something. And if you don't like it, I'll tug my forelock, assume my true troglodyte form and snool my way back into my cave, never to speak again. Apropos of nothing, here is something. But before we get on to the something, here is a message from one of our sponsors. Feeling lead-legged, heavy, weighed down by the gravity here on Earth? Are you feeling corralled by past future, fixed in mind time space, trapped in the money story? Well, the answer is right in front of you, and it's free and easy. No down payments, deposits, joining fees, or interest costs. No barrier save the stories that blind your mind. Forget your Netflix, your Stan, your Facebook. Forget the silver screen, the false and flickering fluorescence, the boxed glow. 
Take the time. Step outside your four walls each night, just for a moment. Feel the coolness caress your skin. Step into the velvet darkness. Bathe in the sterling stars. Draw the pearly light into your very being. It is in the looking and the noticing and the breathing and the sighing that you might fancy you float. get to market on time. We don't know how fast the beast is going to be. Could be a lollygag for all we know. Oh, I can't believe we finally got a donkey. And the best part is it just turned up free. Now I won't have to carry everything back from market. No more cabbage babies strapped on my belly. No more pumpkin hump on my back. And never again the humiliation of that butter-soaked chicken shit dripping through my hair. Oh, that was a bad day. The cockalorums and jackanapes, the hobbledy always, they had a field day laughing till they fell over. Oh, there you are, Ellie. Did you give the beast some hay and water? Yes, Mama, although I don't think it ate much. Uh, excuse me? If you don't mind, I do have a name and a gender, although I'm fine if you want to use they, but it and beast will never do. Oh, 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 what, you speak? Oh, my lunar longings, what on earth? Since when do donkeys go around speaking? Well, I don't always speak. I'm more fond of mind-reading humans than actually talking to them. But really, I can't bear being called Beast. It just drives me bonkers. My name is Ingrid. And you can both stop thinking that having a talking donkey is going to result in pots of gold turning up and you never having to work again. It's not like this is a fairy or a folktale. So let's get to market, shall we? Mama, look, there's a woman from the market. You fools, what is a donkey for but to ride upon? Prince Ellie, get on the beat. Oh, sorry, Ingrid. Get on her. You don't mind, do you, Ingrid? Looks like my opinion doesn't carry much weight. I just have to carry the weight. <laughs> did you get it? <laughs> uh, uh, I guess not. Dog did warn me that you were a pretty simple folk. Oh, look, Mama, there's the women from the pie stall. Come on, don't wave, child. They're the sling wingers that laughed at me last time. Look at that lazy girl. She makes her mother walk while she gets to ride. Quick, get off, Ellie, and I'll get on the... Uh, the Ingrid. Oh, don't mind me. Just treat me like a beast of burden, just because I'm a donkey. Oh, and look who's coming up ahead, an old gabalunzi. I bet you're even going to listen to him. Shh! Shame on that lazy mother to let her poor daughter trudge along while she rides. What on earth are we supposed to do now? I say, just ignore them. But then who am I? Exactly. What would you know? You're just a donkey. Ellie, you better get up here. If a donkey can carry a grown man... There's actually nothing that says a donkey can carry a grown man. Just Google it. 57 kilos tops. I'd put money on it that you two... Oh, uh, uh, definitely well over 57 kilos. When we pass the hootenanny, hold your head up, donkey. Oh, sorry, Ingrid, lift your feet. Come on, just until we pass the hootenanny. Oh, God, they're all gone Googling us. Oh, I do not want to be a laughing stock again. I think it's a bit late for that. Do you want to know what they're thinking? Yes. Oh, God, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I've lied that poor donkey of yours. You and your great lump of a daughter. Oh, I guess I don't need to tell you. Oh, shut up. Just shut up, you stupid beast. It's bad enough having a donkey. We can't walk beside, ride one at a time, or ride together without having a donkey that can talk and give lip all the time. Ellie, there's only one option left. We have to carry the damn donkey. I told you I don't like being called donkey or beast. Are you really so stupid? Oh, no, don't answer that. Let me try it again. 
I've been given the gift of reading humans' minds, and I can tell you that you can never, ever, not in a million years, not in a million donkey years, not if there were a million mind-reading talking donkeys called Ingrid, which I know would make the world a great place, probably solve climate change and all, but personally would not help my panchandrum issues. But not even then would you be able to please all of the people all of the time. Your human brains are measure and judging machines. All day, that's all you do. Measure and judge, measure and judge. Either yourselves or everyone around you. The only way for you to be happy is to... Yeah, yeah, I know. The only way to be happy is to just do what the last person says. You can't please everyone, so you just have to please the last person and keep doing that every time it changes. Well, Donkey, I've had enough. Yes, I'm calling you, Donkey, because I don't care anymore. I don't get what you think or they think or even you, Ellie. The only person I'm going to listen to now is me. So get off, Ellie. I'll get off too and we'll go back to where we started with all three of us walking. And donkey, if you so much as open your mouth to break, I will take that rope off, slap you so hard you run away and will never see you again. Thanks for listening to Tide to the Moon. If you like this podcast, please rate and review it on iTunes or wherever you listen and tell other people about it. And if you have any ideas, suggestions, requests, comments or feedback, I would love to hear from you. You can find the show notes and contact details at storyground.com.au. Their music for this podcast is by Danya from Audio Jungle. This podcast is a production of Storyground and me, Kate Lawrence, and it's made on the traditional lands of the Gunung Willem Bullock at the foot of Mount Macedon, 65 kilometres northwest of Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> <laughs>